Welcome, my friends, to IZB. iOS 11.3 is moving right along with the introduction of Beta 2 for developers. Beta 2 weighed in at around 348 megabytes for my iPhone 10. Your mileage may vary depending on the device that you've got. There are quite a few small changes here in Beta 2 and some improvements from what we saw in the first beta. When you open the App Store, there is a new splash screen letting you know welcome to the App Store. It has the new privacy icon down there in the bottom, and it allows you to continue to the App Store. Previously, we saw on the Updates tab, it showed the version number and the update size. Now, both of those pieces of information are hidden below the expander. So if you tap on More, now you will see both the size and the version number. The next little change we saw actually came in the initial beta, but wasn't found until after our video went live. If you head into your purchased items, you can actually now see the purchase date or the original install date of any of these applications. So for me, I can scroll all the way back, back to 2008 and see some of the first apps that I bought. Obviously, I can't really install many, many more. They've long been abandoned and no longer running on current devices, but still a neat little feature. We also saw in the first beta, there's going to be a new videos, top video section. For me, it really wasn't showing up, but it did start showing up here in this latest beta. Could have just taken a few days and I hadn't noticed, but that top video section has now appeared in the news app some point between the initial beta and right now. If you use Skype, you'll be happy to know that Skype once again works on the latest beta. It was broken on iOS 11.3 beta 1, and that has all been fixed on beta 2. AirPlay 2 also is a ton more stable. It is still buggy, there's still issues going on here, but it is a whole a lot more stable than it was in the original one. It was kind of a mess all over the place in the first one, but now it seems a lot more stable. I can jump back and forth a lot more easily. I don't get things lagging a bunch. If I head into the home app before the Apple TV was constantly saying no response every time I would tap on it, now I can actually tap to play and pause content that's currently playing on my Apple TV. When I do that, it does not show unresponsive. It actually works and does what it's supposed to. The remote inside a control center, this also really wasn't working for me in the last beta that has been fixed up. It works perfectly smooth, really easy to get into, very solid. So a lot of improvements coming to AirPlay 2. I cannot wait for that to get further along. And now, yes, probably the biggest change everyone has been looking for, the new battery health beta inside of the settings app. This new section allows you to see the health of your battery, get a little bit more information on it. You can see the peak performance capability and you're able to disable throttling if your battery has been degraded. If your battery has been degraded to the point where it doesn't really work anymore, a little piece of text will show up that says your battery's health is significantly degraded and Apple authorized service provider can replace the battery to restore full performance and capacity. Obviously, my iPhone 10 is new, so I don't need to turn off throttling because it's not being throttled and my battery health is perfect at 100%, so I'm not seeing that there. And of course, this joins all the other changes we saw in the initial beta, including four new emoji characters, a brand new health initiative where you can actually get health records right in the health app from your medical providers. There's still a limited number of providers uh, working with it, but they'll basically be able to send all your test results right here to your phone. It's really, really awesome. I can't wait for this to keep rolling out to more places as well. A couple other pieces of note, if you got an iPhone 10 starting on beta 2, if you're going to perform a tethered upgrade from your computer, you do need iTunes 12.7.3. And this beta is also currently not working on the iPod Touch. That will be showing up very shortly and possibly the next beta. As always, this list is non-exhaustive, so if you found something else cool, let us and everyone else know down below in the comments. Let us know what you think. Check out all of our other videos on the latest updates like AirPlay 2. And until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.